John here guys and today we're talking about the CL Racing F7 Whoop Board the V3. This is the latest on the market from the Picasso of PCB himself, Ching Lin, the ultimate designer of all Thring's electronics in this hobby. He is the godfather of flight controllers himself. If you've ever flown any of those Talon boards uh, or a lot of the other CL racing products, this is this guy. And he has a lot of revisions in this V3 board. This thing goes all the way up to 6S. It has a 35 amp BL Heli 32 ESC built in, a rarity for these Whoop all-in-one boards, and it has an F7 flight controller built in as well. What do you notice about these things? You actually have full-size pads. A lot of the annoyance of building these all-in-ones is that the pads are just microscopic to the level that you have to use an electron microscope to solder it up. This gives you nice full-size pads. Speaking of full-size though, check out the back. Look at these gargantuan full-size pads. Fats. That is going to allow you to extract the maximum amount of power and take the maximum amount of punishment. Now, Yvonne Lamone actually tested this thing to the max. He was testing the V2. What happened? This bitch hit me. Who? <laughs> no, he didn't actually. He just crashed. Uh, Neil, it was Neil. We wanted to know, are these all-in-one boards finally ready to go on a 6S 5-inch racing quad and put it to the type of abuse that a top 10 pilot in the world can put it to? Now, Yvonne is also one of the newest Betaflight devs and into Betaflight 4.3 he added his own little feature to help him with testing. You know what that is? That's an OSD element for pack counter. That keeps track per flight controller how many packs it's seen. Now you can put a timer in there so it will only count if you manage to fly arm time more than say 30 to 40 seconds. So in other words, if you crash right off the line, that wouldn't count full packs and he tracked over 150 packs on the v2 version of this board in places like we fly like the night spot racing at full speed over concrete the v3 adds a number of new features as well as a new layout that makes it easier to solder up so if you had to go for the maximum weight reduction if you wanted to go with the lightest build the simplest build all in one board but you still wanted security to go for racing or freestyle now i don't know if it's advisable that most racers start converting to these yet um, this is one of the few that lasted the longest so if you were building up a freedom spec or something you were going to run on slower speeds i would say yes go ahead and do it for the rest of the racers out there it's probably not worth the 10 to 11 gram savings but for anyone else out there freestyler three inch four inch five inch that's going to be running things and not crashing them a hundred miles an hour dead into objects this is going to fly comfortably on anything and my biggest decision now is which build i'm going to put this in so what do you think in the comments guys are you using these aios i'm testing this head to head with the beast f7 um, the beast is rated for higher amperage there's a 45 amp version and a 55 amp version but neither one of those have fets that are as large as this so which one is actually going to last the longest i think this is the one that i would choose to go on a full size 5 inch pushing 6s carrying a GoPro and we'll see if it holds up. What do you think in the comments guys? Um, is this the best Whoop AIO board out there? Are you using something else that you like better? Please leave it to me in the comments. I'm testing just about everything out there. I'm getting that beast all in one on my five inch 250 that's gonna be up on the channel very soon as well. Thanks guys. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God with the legs. Don't I don't know what to do. <laughs>